Hey everybody, so this is a quick video blog on pressing up to a handstand from Utkatasana, which is the chair pose or awkward pose in the Ashtanga sequence, that variation. Uh, because Utkatasana has, uh, you can do your own research, it has many expressions that are called Utkatasana. So this is the Ashtanga variation. And I'm utilizing this movement in my level 6 sequence, so this is kind of a, a supplementary information for my level 6 sequence. Uh, that I don't take the time during the sequence to explain what to do. So, uh, some key points. You know, what they'll tell you in a lot of Ashtanga is the, the pointer of the middle finger face directly forward. And what I've found that is more healing for my shoulders is to turn out slightly. Now, this depends on your carrying angle. So, it's a bit hot out here. Let me see if I can kneel. Uh, if I keep my biceps facing forward, but turn externally my forearms, you'll notice that my hands don't hang directly under my shoulders. This angle outwards is called a carrying angle. Some people, they're straight down, some people are way wide. That carrying angle will determine how much you might think about turning your hands out. It's not totally necessary, but it will help with the pressing motion. Uh, another thing they might tell you is to extend through all of the fingers. So you can see there's a lot of extension. There's a big outward uh, intention and energy through the fingertips. Uh, that's good and it helps you to engage especially the hand bandhas uh, which happens basically between the first knuckle and the thumb. This contractile sensation here, here's where the hand bandha is located. And however, uh, for people that might be trying this movement that don't yet have a lot of wrist strength, uh, it can be somewhat dangerous if you lose your balance with fully extended fingers. You end up trying to grip with fingers that you don't have the strength for yet. and you, you, It could hurt the wrist. Um, what's safer for the wrist in the short term? In the long term, you want full extension flat palms. In the short term is to grip. So you grip with the fingertip pads. Uh, so I'll make a wall here and as I grip, the palm stays flat, but I'm squeezing in with the tip of the finger, so I end up making kind of a, almost like a, a claw, like a bear paw or something. And I'm actively squeezing in with the fingertips, especially uh, the thumb and the pinky. Uh, the thumb towards the pinky, all the fingertip pads squeeze in. The base of the first knuckle stays down, so that's my foundation, and I root through that, I expand, I grow through that into the ground. Another thing that would be helpful is uh, with bent arms. Bent arms helps you get up. You end up doing more of a shoulder press that way, but uh, it takes time to develop what's called straight arm scapula strength. So you have a lot of muscles around the scapula. To develop that straight arm scapula strength is, it takes time, you know? Uh, the muscles around the scapula aren't necessarily big, and we end up overcompensating with other muscles like the pecs, uh, the deltoid, the lats, um, maybe even like to some extent the triceps. So, be patient with yourself. So the first variation I'll show will be simply, well, okay, let me take a step back. The first thing I'm gonna show is a proper Utkatasana. And there's many variations for it, but there are some features that are common in all of them, and those are the ones I wanna to emphasize to you, such as weight on the balls of the feet, heels stamped down, uh, a lengthening from the tailbone to the crown, so it's not such a back bend, and any back bend there is is really in the upper back with the shoulder girdle. Uh, and there needs to be a pulling in sensation of the belly. That inward suction of the belly, that it's an Uddiyana Bandha, that if you watch my Pranayama video on Uddiyana Bandha, uh, that inward motion, that lift, that's where you're gonna get the lift for a press handstand. And that's mostly at the confluence of transverse abdominis and psoas major. That's what creates that inward pulling with the belly. Uh, and then obviously the breath is super important. If you can, initiate the press at the very end of your exhale so that the commencement which is the most powerful uh, part of the inhale is when it initiates at the commencement of the inhale if that can initiate the lifting that's where you're gonna find the most success uh, it's the same thing with like jumping through or jump backs in Ashtanga or if you're jumping forward in your sun salutations always on the commencing it is really annoying when I hear people say you jump forward on the exhale it's wrong it's incorrect it's not a contractile motion, it's, a, it's an expansive motion. You're pouring weight into your shoulder girdle, that's expanding. You need to jump forward on your inhales. Just like you press up to a handstand or you lift up from a uh, seated position from an inhale.
the first variation will simply be uh, pouring weight into the hands, so no lifting at all, but you're getting, you know, if I pour weight into my hands right now, I would consider this a handstand. My feet haven't left the ground, but so much of my weight is pouring into my arms, more weight in, was in my hands than my, my feet. That's a handstand to me. Uh, the second level would be to kind of pike a little bit, which would be like sort of floating. And if you can't do it for five breaths, you do it for half a breath. And maybe you try it a couple times. What's most important when you do this movement, especially during the yoga sequence, if you, if you can't do it for all five breaths, what's most important is that you keep rhythm with the breath. If you ever fell out of a handstand or any, any movement that's balanced and you fall, you just focus on the rhythm and timing of your breath. And that's way more important than actually the, the technique, the, the, the shape that you're putting your body through. Oh, it looks like my screen is cracked. And, and then the final variation I'll show will be the press up to a handstand. Uh, there's obviously, this could be a whole workshop on the technique of a handstand, the alignment. Um, you know, I'm, I am a fan of just do it and knowledge will come. And I'm giving you the tools so that you don't hurt yourself. Uh, you know, learning how to cartwheel out of a handstand will help you from flopping over. So I'm not gonna go into how to cartwheel out of a handstand. You just do a cartwheel. Your legs come down uh, to the side. Okay, so first is uh, who could toss in the stance. You might have feet wide, you might have feet close together. The idea is that on the exhale, you're in samastitihi. And on the inhale, you bend, and the arm comes up at the comes up at the same time. So it's an inhale. How low you go? Some people want to graze the ground, but then they end up coming up way high. I don't really see the point of that. If you're going to graze the ground, then stay low. Uh, I'm I'm not so flexible that I can stay so low in that. So mine is simply an inhale, and you're looking at the thumbs. Some people like to keep the arms apart, maybe not even look up. The idea though is not to over arch in the lower back. That takes away my Uddiyana Bandha and it kind of crunches the sacrum. So I'm actually pointing the tail, I'm trying to point the tailbone down and forward as if I have a long like monkey tail or a panther's tail that points down and goes forward. Most of my weight is in the balls of the feet. It's almost as if I can come up on the toes and yet I stamp the heels down. So there's an active lifting of the feet. I'm leaning forward, but the feet are stamping down. And the f higher I can reach, the more I lock my elbows and reach through the hands, the more you'll see this stomach go in and up. Now when I initiate the, the press movement, it's gonna be an exhale as I straighten and pull, but I keep that lift in the belly the whole time. So I never lose that. Inhale to lift, exhale, I keep the pulling in and the hands go flat. Maybe I need to bend the knees to keep the hands flat. From here, I inhale to the press, but maybe I'm not lifting up. First variation is you just pour weight into the hands, lighten the load on the feet. If you can keep your arms straight here, that'll help to develop straight arm scapula strength. Again, you're either gripping with the grounds or extending tremendously through the fingers. Eventually on the exhale, you either hop or you just step your feet back and go through the vinyasa as I do in the video. Okay, the second variation will be kind of a pike balance, uh, a planche, sorry, I think I said pike earlier. It's a planche balance, which is the gymnastics move, um, or gymnastics term anyway. Uh, the, the planche, I'll, I'll show it with a straight arm and with a bent arm. Technically in the Ashtanga sequence, uh, you planche for about half a breath, and then you go back. This movement I'm doing this level six sadhana yoga chi video is actually press it to a handstand to hold for five breaths. So again, exhale, inhale, one, two, three, four, five, and on the fifth exhale, I fold, and then I'm inhaling to a planche. And maybe I have bent arms in the planche. If I lose my balance, maybe I can even keep one foot down, but I'm trying to pour as much weight into the hands as possible and I'm really protracting, so I don't want to sink into the spine and pull weight into the hands. I want to be pushing out and get that big rounded motion, almost like a crow pose, and then exhaling to come back. All else is the same, inhale to Ukitasan, five breaths on the fifth exhale, fold, pour weight into the hands, proper hand position like I just said, 
maybe even a little wider than your shoulders. All depends on you. Uh, I'm giving you hints, so if you have no shoulder or wrist pain, maybe you just go straight under your shoulders. Eventually, if you develop shoulder and wrist pain, or if you have some now, here's a suggestion. Go a little wider, turn your hands out. It might help. And then on the exhale, maybe you take one leg down for a soft landing, or you can just try to plonch down very softly to your chaturanga. I don't have any videos on chaturanga, but you want to have firm legs and follow the rhythm of your breath. And stay.